Hey guys, welcome to this fun episode of Talking Trucks because Andre, today we're going to be talking about two trucks that are very different, but yet they're very similar in one important way. Yes, and actually these are very exciting trucks. We've been waiting for these trucks maybe even for decades. So we're of course talking about the brand new Ram TRX and and a brand new 2021 Jeep Gladiator diesel. So the question guys is that you have to ponder before we come back from the intro is what do these trucks have in common? Think amongst yourselves. Thank you for joining TFL Talking Trucks podcast. If you love pickup trucks or big full-size SUVs, if you love trailering, towing and going off-road, this is the right place to be. Together we can make this podcast the most popular ever. So did you guys figure it out? Andre, you want to give them a hint? Well, it's actually the capability. You know, trucks are trucks because they need to work. And we're talking about, of course, about towing capability and payload capability. And these trucks, both of them, they're very focused, right? So the TRX is a premier off-road truck focused on off-roading, fast desert running. The diesel Gladiator is focused a little bit more, you know, on kind of long range off-roading, right? And hard uh, rock crawling. But what do they have in common as far as payload? Well, you know, uh, let me flip it around. What they have in common is that they both don't tow very well, <laughs> which is crazy because they both have gobs of horsepower, gobs of torque. Well, wait, you have to define this. You said don't tow very well. They don't tow very much, all right? Very much. Or they could tow really well, but not very much. You're very good, Andrea. You got me, and <laughs> rightfully so. Uh, and they don't haul very well either. Well, yes. maybe they haul very well, but they don't <laughs> haul very much. <laughs> yes. So what are we talking about? So we recently, actually this week, we have a TRX uh, on loan vehicle from Ram. So thank you, Ram, very much uh, for this. Let, let me uh, define what that is. Yes. So the TRX is the new Raptor fighting, off-road running, Raptor eating, right? Supercharged. <laughs> Supercharged. Supercharged monster. So it's basically uh, 1,500, a half ton, full-size pickup truck yep. uh, based on the Ram 1500 that's been completely reworked and they stuck a Hellcat power plant in it that produces just over 700 horsepower. Yeah, and 650 pound-feet of torque. And it's a beast, dude. Yeah, it's a beast. You know, the Raptor, what, comes in at about 450? So they, they upped it by 252 horsepower, I believe. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, you would think with that much power, that much torque, uh, it would tow like a monster. Now keep in mind, a typical full-size truck will tow anywhere from, let's say, nine to 12,000, depending on how it's configured. Yeah, uh, and then there are some that'll even tow more than that if you get the you know the special towing uh, package. Yeah, like two wheel drive, you right. know, short cab, long bed. Uh, those trucks may tow like thirteen thousand, maybe a little bit more. Now the new F one hundred and fifty is coming out with fourteen thousand of pay, uh, of towing uh, capability. But yep. the TRX will only tow eighty one hundred. That's the rating. Yeah, eight thousand one hundred. Which, by the way, is just a hundred more than the Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> you think that was on purpose? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and the question, of course, you might be wondering is, with so much power and so much torque, why does it only tow, you know, a touch over 8,000 pounds? Yeah, and before we get there, let's talk about the Jeep. Uh, so the Jeep, once again, so it's a midsize truck, yes. right? The Gladiator. It just came out, what, about a year and a half ago. It's a brand new entry into the market. And everybody is, well, I was excited because it's, it combines kind of the Wrangler capability, right? Solid axles, lockers, disconnecting front sway bar. Uh, beefy tires and it creates you know adds a bed onto it and makes it into a truck and they've had a v6 in it for a long time yeah yeah i mean uh, the, the gas kind of star yeah it's been around and the, the, the other thing that these two trucks have in common is they're both the top of the line models right so the most expensive ram 1500 you can get is a trx and the most expensive gladiator you can get is the one with the diesel power plant yes uh, but the diesel tows the least six thousand pounds Maximum. Maximum, which is and less. This is, we have to define this. This is the uh, Rubicon. Right, the Rubicon. Right, so the Rubicon Diesel Gladiator has a rating of 6,000. And this is, the one, this is the truck we also have right now. Yes. Uh, as a loan. Uh, if you get the base sport diesel, if you can ever find one, that can tow up to 6,500. Still a very small number. Well, relatively small number, but 6,500. And how much can the, what's the maximum towing on the Pentastar? On the Pentastar, if you get the Sport uh, on the Gladiator, it's 7,650. And so you're losing about, what, 1,200 pounds rating. 
Yeah, and the reason for that, obviously, is one word, payload. So why don't you explain payload, because you're better at this than I am. Yeah, well, so the more stuff you put inside a truck, we're talking about either a big engine. Big dog? Like, uh, well, let's, let's, <laughs> let's take the passengers out of it for now. All right. Uh, so big big. Because we have a big dog, so I'm worried about it. Bla Blaze. Yeah, we have Blaze. He's yeah. going to be big. That, he's a Bernese mountain dog. He's going to be big. He's going to be at least 100 pounds. Totally. Um, the TRX has a new frame, right? Updated frame, which is bigger and heavier. It has big suspension, long travel, giant shocks, V8 engine with a supercharger on top of it. It's got, uh, you know, everything else, uh, heavy duty axles in the rear. Uh, when you add all this weight into a truck, you're basically decreasing its payload, right? Because, because uh, the, most, the trucks with the highest payload are the ones that are the simplest, you know, the most basic, the two wheel drives. Um, as soon as you add all these features and, on, and luxury features on top of it, you're basically decreasing the payload because you cannot make the springs any stiffer, right? So if you make the springs really, really stiff to be able to handle all this weight, it will ride like an ox cart, basically. Yeah, so ironically, um, that also affects towing. Yeah, because, you know, when you put a trailer on the hitch, right, you're pushing down on the truck with the weight of the trailer hitch, which is called tongue weight, right? And... If you're towing 8,000 pounds or 8,100 in the case of the TRX, you may be pushing down on a truck with about 810 pounds. So 10%. 10% of that. Yeah. And then the TRX we have currently on loan has 966 pounds of payload. Holy cow. How much does a normal 1,500 have? Around. Well, so uh, Alex just bought a Rebel, yeah, right? Our yeah. producer, Alex, um, that also runs the TFL bike channel. Uh, his uh, Rebel has about four, almost 1,500 pounds of payload. So almost double. Yeah, and you, can get, and you can get other Ram 1500s with even more payload. Yeah, so if you're looking uh, to purchase a truck that tows, the more uh, expensive it is, I guess, the less it might tow. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're adding, adding four-wheel drive, that'll make it right. tow less. Yeah. You know, you're adding creature comforts, that'll increase, once again, payload, I mean, uh, weight, right, and mm -hmm. make it tow less. So, uh, the, ironically, the trucks that tow the most tend to be the very kind of basic trucks, the work trucks. Yeah. Which uh, makes sense, I guess. Yeah, because you've got to do the work, right? Yeah. But when you add, you know, uh, leather steering wheels and heated seats and panoramic sunroofs and all that stuff, your payload goes down, your maximum towing goes down. But also, it has to do with the springs because they want to tune these trucks to do off-road things, right? Not just run on the highway. Yeah. All right, so let's cut to the chase, Andre. You got to take uh, the TRX and go tow with it. Now, we were trying to do this explanation on video, and we thought, how can we do that? Uh, and so what we did was we actually added weight to uh, the bed of the truck to use up some of the payload, uh, giving us even less towing, because we could have strapped 8,000 pounds to it, yes. uh, but it would have been kind of silly. So we thought, let's show and demonstrate what we mean by payload. So we stuck this, well, Amazon Chinese motorcycle <laughs> that we bought for, for uh, $2,000. Uh, into the bed. Into the bed that we're using for the bike channel. Yeah. Uh, and so that decreased your payload by, what, 250 pounds? Approximately, yes. So now you were, what, at? So now I was at 966, now I'm at like, what, seven, almost 700. But then you gotta take the driver into account. Yeah, I, I, I've been gaining weight during COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so basically it left you with about 5, 500 pounds, 500 of, pounds of payload, payload right. which means 10% of that you could basically tow 5,000 pounds. And we did. And we did, so we yeah. have a trailer that weighs 3,000. Uh, and then we were like, well, what do we put in the thing that weighs 2,000? And we luckily had one thing that weighed that much, which is? <laughs> which is a brand new 2021 Can-Am Maverick X3 Max X RS Turbo RR. Which weighs 2,000 pounds. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it kind of makes sense, because right, if you're going to buy a TRX, you might have this as your toy, yeah. and you might have the motorcycle. Pr granted, you may not have the mighty Chinese Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> you might have a Honda or Kawasaki, right? But, but you right. will have a dirt bike. So we thought, let's put a dirt bike in the bed, and let's tow uh, side by side up the Ike Gauntlet. And we did that. So how did it go, dude? So uh, this video will also be on TFL Truck uh, channel. Uh, very, very soon. And so, first of all, power was not an issue. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I mean, uh, after putting all this weight into this uh, truck, uh, we, I, I almost didn't know the trailer was back there. 
Wow. You know, just, just accelerating, just moving around. And so what you want with a truck, especially for towing, right, you want a big platform. You want the truck to be long, long wheelbase. You want the truck to be wide. That's why dualies tow the most, right? Because you want to have stability. And TRX is six inches wider than a regular Ram 1500. It had really good stability. The tires are gigantic. Um, it, just, it just had everything uh, really required to, be, to have the chassis and the, and the platform to tow. And then um, no trailer sway whatsoever. It was solid as a rock. All right. Um, all right. I don't know how much. In, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to give away everything. Yeah. If you guys are listening to this on um, our audio podcast, yes. Uh, you know, on Apple or wherever you get your podcast from, just go over to um, YouTube. YouTube yeah. TFL Truck YouTube channel, right? Our YouTube channel. And this Sunday, uh, you can watch that, and you can see how many brake applications the truck took. Uh, and how it towed going up. I can tell you this though, this is for my person, I also towed a side by side with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did some zero to 60 testing on the TRX and up here to mile above sea level, we got it to go from zero to 60 in five seconds, which is pretty yeah. incredible. Yes. Keep in mind it's supercharged, so that helps. Mm -hmm. Ram says it's 3.5. 4.5. Four, oh, 4.5. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we were close to what they say. We were, we're close, we're yeah. Close. Which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and when I was towing, I was towing the same thing, about 5,000 pounds. My gut tells me that when I floored it, I was probably zero to 60 in more like the nine second range. That's what so it felt like. you didn't lose a lot of performance, really. No, but keep right. in mind, most trucks are more like in the 15 second range at <laughs> yeah. that point. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's a good truck, but once again, you, you cannot bring maybe a giant camping shredder with you, right? So you are limited. So if you're buying a TRX to tow and you want to tow it, you know, maybe like a 25 foot camper or maybe, you know, additional toys behind it or inside of this toy hauler or whatever you may want to tow, it may not be able to do that legally. Right, because we're, we're talking about the ratings that you know the engineers built into the truck, and it has to do with the springs, with the shocks, uh, the brakes, right, and also the cooling, right. So it has to be able to cool itself, and they test it on Davis Dam, right, in order to be able to tell. Yeah, it has to. There's a series of uh, SAE Society of Automotive Engineers. Um, requirements that it has to meet and mm -hmm. and based on that that's how much it can tow uh, so you know yeah it could probably tow like 50,000 pounds <laughs> but can it do it safely can no. it stop it can yeah. it stop it right. yeah no can it pull it yeah <laughs> you know there's that video where I had the Ford electric f-150 towing the train right right you know pulling it or like you see all these videos of like uh, pulling a plane a plane like a 747 yeah. that's yeah. not really towing that's just moving it once you know something starts rolling it's not all that hard it's stopping it from rolling and controlling that load. Right. All right, and so uh, let's do a quick jump over to the Gladiator. What, what do you think of that? Now, I, didn't, I haven't had a chance to actually drive it yet. You took it home a couple nights. What do you think of it? Tommy loved it. He loves that like diesel clatter. It's basically the same eco diesel. Right. I'm doing air quotes again. They, they took out of the uh, uh, 1500 uh, right. Ram. Yeah. Uh, keep in mind, they had a lot of issues with the first gen. Uh, one. Yeah, so they're calling it an all new gen, right? Yeah. Uh, we were actually, I was there at the first event where they were launching the engine in the Ram 1500. This was about a year ago or a little bit more. And they completely redesigned it. I think they said something about like 78% new parts, you know, a lot of new parts. And they have a lot more emissions uh, control systems on it. It's, you know, it's quite complicated. It has exhaust gas recirculation on the high pressure side and the turbo side and also low pressure side and i asked the engineer about this he explained it to me and i still couldn't understand it yeah if so, you want, if you want to know what happened with the first gen go over to tfl truck and <laughs> just google eco diesel you'll see there there were a lot of issues with it eventually a lawsuit uh that eventually led to a settlement that eventually led to people having their to retune their trucks which a lot of people weren't happy about because it, it slowed them down, yada, yada, yada. It's a long story. Uh, but so far, this new generation of eco diesels seems to be uh, much better. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the EPA isn't, isn't you know, finding uh, FCA so yet. There's no, you know, issues as far as we know. Uh, it, it has, it's EPA rated, right, 24 MPG combined. This diesel uh, Gladiator is rated at, and I believe 27 um, or know, 28 on the highway. Do you know what the EPA rating is for the new Ford F-150 hybrid? 
Yes, also 24. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what? It's 24, 24, 24. Yeah. City, yeah. City, highway, and combined. Which tells you just how efficient it is. Yeah, because the hybrid probably is gaining on the, in the city, right? Stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. So anyway, so this diesel Gladiator, they improved this engine, right? New, new generation of the V6, the new 3 liter. 260 horsepower, 442 pound-feet of torque. So it's very torquey engine. Um, and I fired it up in the morning yeah. at my house uh, this week. I had it at home one day. And it came to life with a lot of like big rig, like noises. Boom, you know, the diesel just came on. Um, and they, they said they made it quieter. But, but it was still, you could tell it was a diesel. It was quite loud. And then when it warmed up, it became very nice, docile, a, little, a lot more quiet. On the highway, you don't even notice the engine is there, you know, when you're rolling down the Tom, highway. Tommy drove it home one night. He was really, he kind of fell in love with it. He loved, like, the, the fact that he's, like, you know, in a big truck, right? You feel like diesels and trucks <laughs> really do go well together. Yeah. And so he really loved that aspect of it. Now, you know... They put the diesel in the Wrangler, now they did the Gladiator. And I spent a lot of time thinking about why I would pay, uh, what is it, I think it's $4,000 extra? Plus two, if you, because you have to, uh, so it's 4000 for the engine plus 2000 for the 8-speed. Right. Because it's only available with the 8-speed. So it's, if, if you wanted a manual, you couldn't do it. And with that $2,000 addition for the automatic, you're looking at a $6,000 up Yeah, that's, charge. that's a steep, that's a steep up charge. Uh, yeah, and so, you know, why would you want that? Uh, and there is one... Uh, and it's actually an important thing, I think, that like Jeep guys and gals would appreciate, and that is if you're going to lift your Jeep, which a lot of people do, right, eventually what you end up doing is you end up running, well, not eventually, pretty quickly end up running out of power uh, and torque. And torque, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I think, you know, we've got, I think, 35s on ours, uh, and that's still doable, uh, but I don't think I'd want to go any bigger than 35s, but people go now, you know, 37s, 39s, uh, 40s, 40s, and, and, on. and, and yeah. at that point... If you have a Pentastar, you're really going to have to either like turbocharge it or supercharge it, and then you're going to have to upgrade probably well everything downstream of that, right? Mm -hmm. So drive shaft, axles, gets very expensive. Uh, and I think with uh, with the diesel with that much torque, how many how many pounds? You know, four hundred and forty-two. Yeah, four forty-two. You, you probably can go you know pretty big. And it's, not not worry about running out of torque. So the the Gladiator Rubicon we have, it's got 33s from the factory, yeah. right? So that's still a 33. It's effortless acceleration, right? The acceleration is really good, especially down low around the city. You don't even, you know, it can go. It feels really sprightly, really nice. Um, and well, this one also talking about like highest level of truck, right? This Gladiator that we have on t for testing is the most expensive tr Gladiator I've ever seen. How much? 66000 Wow, that is up there. Uh, you, for that money, you could certainly get a full-size truck, a really nice full-size truck. You could get a Rebel for that money easily. You get, well, you can get a Rebel and a half. <laughs> and you could get a heavy-duty. You could probably, Power, you power could, wagon? You could probably even get uh, a diesel. You could, you could get a bit. You could yeah. get a, a heavy diesel, diesel yeah. for, for that money. Yeah, yeah. maybe not be the upper. It may not be like you know a dually or a thirty-five hundred, but you could <laughs> right. certainly get a single rear wheel or a twenty-five hundred for that. Yeah, you could. Yeah, and, and keep in mind a diesel and a heavy duty costs like six. Well, it depends on which one, but well, up to ten k more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so what? So the other reason I think for this uh, diesel Gladiator, and why have been, people been asking for this, right? People have asked Toyota to build a diesel Tacoma. They've asked Jeep. They've asked Chevy. Chevy has their Colorado, right? So um, why is that? I think it also has to do with range, right? You don't want to fill up every 200 miles, right? Especially with big tires. So range is a really important. This truck has about 18.3 gallons of uh, tank. The Gladiator diesel. So multiply that so, by 24. Yeah, or 27 if you're going on the highway. That's well over 400 miles. You know, maybe even more if you know, depending on how you drive, as far as your range is concerned. So you can go a long ways. Yeah. So if you're looking at it as a long-term um, highway cruiser, mm -hmm. uh, it's a really good choice. Um, now, I got to tell you, Andre, I think we're seeing kind of the high water mark for diesels. Uh, I, you know, with the Ford hybrid coming out they're still building the diesel but i'm i'm kind of thinking that people are going to go not for the diesel but more for the the hybrid right and that one according to ford uh, the new f-150 hybrid has a range of 700 miles yes and also uh inverter power to power your toys accessories etc so 
I, I kind of agree with you, especially when talking about small trucks, right? Yeah. Uh, heavy duties, yeah, diesel is always makes sense, especially, you know, 2500, 3500 and beyond. I think diesel makes a lot of sense, but when you talk about F-150 or Ram 1500 or Gladiator, um, I think diesel is just not, it used to be really cool, but it's not anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as usability of it, right? Because you have to pay more to begin with. You know the take rate on the little Colorado baby diesel, on the baby Duramax? I want to say it's like 20%. It's pretty small. It could be less than that, actually. It, it I, don't know, I don't think they state that, right. state those numbers. But it could be less. So that, that means like one out of either five or one out of ten, something like that, is, is a diesel. Yeah, yeah, so it's not a high take rate. But, but there are those people, you know, guys and gals, who love that, you know, diesel clatter, diesel torque. Uh, but once again... You've lost payload, right? So, eight. It's ironic, isn't it? That eight hundred and ninety-nine pounds. How come? How come? How come you don't lose payload in the heavy-duty trucks? Just well, you do. It, you but, still but they're do. just so much beefier <laughs> that it doesn't really matter, right? right? So, like, if you if you go for like a Ram thirty-five hundred, right? Yeah. So it starts at about seventy, like five hundred pounds of payload. You know, seven and a half thousand pounds of payload, and then you put all the features into it: the dually, the four-wheel drive. And you still at like 5,500. You know, you still lost a lot of payload, but you still, <laughs> you still can carry a house in there. So it, it that doesn't quite matter as much. Yeah, it's just, it's just a bigger tool yeah. in the toolbox. So but you, but when, when four of us get in that truck, you know, we, we could max, out, max it out on payload. All right, I got to ask you, Andre, let's go back to the TRX. Yes. Now that you spend a week behind the wheel, what's your take on it? Dude, it's 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 really cool. Yeah. Uh, the one we have is ninety-one grand. It's quite expensive. Ooh, that, well, I say the one we have. We don't. Uh, we ordered one. The one we have this week yeah, is this ninety-one thousand. This is one that we borrowed from. It's on loan from Ram. Ram. So right. the one that we ordered is not ninety-one. So I, I'm struggling with this. First of all, it's it's comfortable. The seats are amazing. Uh, the truck is just the suspension is floaty. It's. Um, I think it is. I agree with you. I think it is like a first gen Raptor. Yeah, the Raptor, it, current Raptor is a little bit too harsh. It's a little stiffer. Yeah. Did you know that uh, the TRX has the very first application of a heads up display for an FCA vehicle? I, I yeah, I learned that, and it, I used it when towing. Yeah. And I used it uh, off road. It's it's pretty handy. It has a lot of information, like you know, speed, your navigation. Um, if, if you're using cruise control, right, uh, so, so a lot of information. You know what my there. favorite feature is? What? Uh, and I don't think anybody else does this. It, that uh, little sensing thing where it knows exactly what uh, length your trailer is and it automatically sets the trailer length for the blindside monitoring. Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, normally if you're in a truck, right, and you've got the blindside monitoring, the light that lights up when there's somebody in your blind spot mm -hmm. when you're changing lanes, uh, you have to tell it what length your trailer is because it doesn't know. Whereas uh, the, the Ram does. The, the Ram and the TRX, it, once you make a turn, it just measures the length of the trailer and then it says, you have a 30 foot trailer. And so if somebody, you know, I, ideally if you don't tell the truck that, and if it doesn't know, you, you know, somebody could be next to your trailer and the little light doesn't go off and, you know, catastrophe ensues. Mm -hmm. But with the Ram and the TRX, it doesn't. It's, it's, it's one of my favorite features. If yeah, you're towing a lot, I, I would highly recommend it. Yeah, and Ram engineers, because uh, I asked about it, I was like, are you using radar, are you using cameras? They actually said cameras. Really? I was surprised. Like Tesla. Tesla does that too. Yeah, because actually you can see the angle of the thing. It's really, you know, it's really neat. You know what my favorite feature is of what? the TRX? What's that? The, the Hellcat? It's, it's the sound. Plane? Oh, no, the it's sound. the sound. Those exhausts are like five inch in diameter. So it, oh, it's really strange too. So you fire up the truck, you know it starts, right? It comes roaring to life, but the cab is quiet. The cabin itself uh, is very insulated, very nice and luxurious and quiet. And you're like, well, did I buy the right truck, right? Is, does it really have the 702 horsepower? And then you walk out back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Even at idle, this truck sounds really mean, really amazing. And then at full throttle, uh, a camera guy uh, was following me uh, back to the, uh, from, from the video we were doing. He's like, I could hear your truck over the sound of our truck, which was the trail bus. Wow. So, so it's quite well, loud. And I think you're also 
um, hearing a lot of that supercharger whine. So yeah, yeah. So you, little you, hear, blower the, you hear the blower sound from the front, yes. and then you hear the exhaust from the back. It's quite you know quite a magical cacophony of <laughs> of good noises. And yes. have you noticed that when you're towing, the supercharger whine is much higher? Yeah, and it lasts a little bit longer. Yeah, it's just kind of yeah, yeah. I can't it's, it's it's yeah. It's hard to reproduce a supercharger whine. Well, I uh, mean, like like you. Can, Step on a cat by accident, you'd probably be close to it. <laughs> no, it's much better than stepping on a cat by accident. Have you stepped on your cat by accident, Andre? Uh, not recently, no. but I, I want to avoid that. I don't want to hurt cats. You're a very mean cat, Andre. <laughs> I think your cat, your cat wouldn't be the kind of that would whine. It would just lash out. It will it'll yeah. hiss it'll, and it'll, it'll, it'll take snap. your leg off. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe the Hellcat, this one, will do the same thing. So what do you think of that big 12-inch display in the TRX? It, it's cool, yeah. uh, but you know it's been around for about two years, yeah, year so and no, a half. Nothing new. So I, I like um, just kind of, and it's actually, I thought at first the TRX was going to be really big, yeah, you know, because it is big. It's really wide, it's wide and long. Yeah. But it doesn't feel that big on the highway. You know, when I was driving it, I could see around it using the mirrors, standard mirrors that it comes with. Um, and then it kind of is nimble for a 6,800 pound vehicle. I, I mean, I thought, what, what did you think when driving it? Did you well, think yeah, it I think you put giant? 200 horsepower in anything and no matter how, how heavy it is, it's going to feel nimble, right? It's just, I don't think it doesn't feel heavy. Uh, the one criticism I have, so let's talk about the bad, we talked about the good. Mm -hmm. uh, the one criticism I have, it's, it's just a little too understated. You know, we were driving it on the program around by uh, Reno, Nevada. Uh, and like uh, there was a guy in a Ram uh, next to us and he completely like didn't even see it Maybe he wasn't you know like looking for the TRX But we were like I was basically next to him like almost waving to him like hey look look it's the new I, TRX yeah. yeah, and he didn't care so I, I would have loved to seen a little bit more boyhood racer kind of look You know a little bit more I mean there it has these big kind of coke bottle fender flares But I would have liked to seen them extravagant, you know a little bit more extravagant I guess uh, the ours wasn't stickered up so mm -hmm. You know, it didn't have so a big more TRX. Subdued. It yeah. was more subdued. I think on the side it only says 6.2, right? But very small. Very huh? small, yeah. yeah. It doesn't. doesn't I, have, I'd like to see. You know. You know what? I was watching uh, one of the auction sites. By the way, if you guys are looking to uh, sell a truck, mm -hmm. you know we have a new all truck all the time auction site called TFL Bids. Yeah, we just launched it. Yeah, the, today. So uh, go over to TFL Bids where we're selling our uh, F250 that we had uh, lifted by our friends. Uh, Carly yep. in California, um, and it's up there right now. Or if you've got a cool truck you want to sell, uh, well, please put it up. We'd love to have your uh, truck for sale. I think uh, this is going to be, hopefully, if it works out, you know, a, a home for car guys and car gals to to not only buy but also to sell the trucks. Yeah, but truck focused, right? It's all yeah, trucks all the yeah, time. Yeah, all trucks all the time. TFLbids.com. Yeah, uh, but I was saying, I was just what I was saying was I would have liked to see a little. Like, like I was saying, so at, at the auction I was watching, mm -hmm. um, they had that screaming chicken or <laughs> eagle. <laughs> yes. Uh, Trans Am, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Screaming chicken. That was probably a little over the top, <laughs> like the Burt Reynolds one, you know? But, yes. But, but a little bit more of that in the TRX, I think, would have been appreciated. Maybe, I don't know, T-Rex, you know, maybe, maybe you work on that dinosaur theme a little bit more. I see that. So uh, I have two stories. Yep. Uh, I was at our test track, IMI Motorsports. Mm -hmm. uh, I pulled up uh, to the office and one of the dudes walked out and I kind of revved the engine. He waved and then he kind of kept walking and, uh, and then he kind of turned back. He didn't realize it was a TRX. Right. He thought I was just in kind of a rebel truck. So I, I, there was one case. The other case, I was, I was sitting at the traffic light um, inside in the TRX. And the guy pulls up next to me and he's waving and he's yelling, roll down your window, roll down your window. So I roll down my window. He's like, I want that. And I look over, this dude is driving a Raptor. Really? So a Raptor owner pulled wow. up next to me at the traffic light, started yelling at me uh, in a good way. Uh, and, and, and then just said, I love that. You know, I love the TRX. When can I get one? I was like, you cannot have this one. You know, there's a guy who came by our offices this week who ordered one because of us. Really? Through Johnson's, yeah. So we use Johnson's Auto Plaza. Uh -huh. uh, great dealership. I can't recommend them enough. And I, t I tend to really hate dealerships, Andre. You know, there's only a few that I will actually happily use. The rest I avoid like the plague. Mm -hmm. uh, Johnson's Auto Plaza is one of them. Uh, and because of us, uh, he said he called around Denver. Everybody was asking $20,000 markups. Really? And, and Johnson said, yeah, we, you know, we'll put you on our allocation. Uh, they already had two allocations, uh, you know, sold. Uh, sold. So okay. he's in the third allocation. Uh, and he was uh, like like a kid with a 
a new toy just crawling all over the one we had here. He actually came by because he felt we had one. Okay. And ours was parked in front of the offices. I'm, um, I'm hopefully not giving away any secrets here. <laughs> well, because go. we had a trailer in that. Yeah, we had, we had a trailer. Yeah, uh -huh. because we were, you know, we were doing some towing with it, the eye gauntlet. Uh, yeah, and he was, he was, uh, he was over the moon. So, uh, yeah, I think you know, we called it the first super truck, and I think it's, it's right. It really is. The Raptor is good, but it just didn't have enough power to be called super. And maybe the Cyber Truck or maybe the Hummer EV will be the first hyper truck. You know, because then you're going. Not 700 horsepower, but 1,000 horsepower. Yeah, and you're going three seconds there at the 60s. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's going to be interesting. I'm not, I was surprised by this Raptor owner's reaction because I was thinking maybe he'll be offended, right? Maybe he was going to say, oh, my Raptor is way better than whatever you have or whatever you're driving. But he was very positive, right? Very welcoming of it. So I, I'm, I'm really curious about how it will affect Raptor sales how many um, TRXs will Ram sell? But I think they'll be you, successful. You know what makes the, the Raptor and now the TRX so cool? Mm. Uh, I was doing a lot of thinking about this. So this week, if you go to TFL Truck, you'll notice we did a video where we did TRX versus the world, yep. the sickest drag race. So we drag race, I'm not gonna tell you who won, you gotta go see it if you haven't. It was the uh, uh, Rebel versus Silverado, first bracket, then it took on the Raptor, and then the winner of that took on the TRX. Right. Uh, and you know the guy who brought the Raptor, Theo. Thank you for bringing it, Theo. Yeah. Was using it as just a you know his everyday driver and as a work truck. Yeah. He, he, his wife has like a furniture business. Right. And he's carrying furniture. <laughs> yeah. And he actually may be selling his Raptor on TFL bids because he needs a heavy duty truck. Yeah. He needs yeah, a yeah. more. Well, what we started talking about, right? <laughs> Payload. Yes. Uh, uh, so I hope he does. Uh, we'd love to have you, Theo. Uh, anyway, Andre. Um, you know, there are people out there who have a lot of money, uh, and I'm not talking about like Raptor money, I'm talking about like Ferrari and Lamborghini money, right? Mm -hmm. But whenever you buy a supercar, be it, and you could compare, I think it'd be fair to compare like the TRX to maybe even a Veyron, it's that much, you know, it's, it's, it's up there. Um, but the problem with a Veyron, a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, uh, is they're really one trick ponies. Right, they're, they're cool, but you can't use them every day. You certainly can't use them in the snow. You certainly can't use them to move your family around, unless you maybe get like the Urus or something. But even okay. then, right? A small flood or something, crossing water, water or whatever. Yeah. Right, you just, it's, it's a car that, that never gets driven a lot. It's only driven on special occasions. But with the Raptor and now with the TRX, you've got basically the Ferrari, the Lamborghini, the Porsche, whatever you want of trucks and you can use it every day and you're not really even though yes it's compromised in some ways but it's not compromised to such an extent that you can't tow with it i mean eight thousand pounds dude is still a lot yeah right that's or even five thousand that we did this right week. that's still yeah. more than most people will tow right that's a boat that's a good size uh trailer yeah a little camper it's a it's it's a medium size it's camper a me yeah I right agree. like it's a medium it's a full size airstream yeah five thousand pounds is a lot yes right yeah. or eight thousand or oh, eight thousand, yeah. right? Um, or it's you know a good sized toy hauler. So if you're if you've got a race car, or if you've got a bunch of side by sides, you can still use them. Whereas with all these other like exotic sports cars, you, you take them to cars and coffee, or cruise up and down the boulevard, right. or you know if you want to impress your friends at work or church, I guess. <laughs> but that's it. You know you can't put your family into it, and you right. can't certainly use it for your wife's furniture business. Yeah, and people call the TRX a one-trick pony, yeah. but we're finding out after we've been testing it that I, I, I think that's not fair. Uh, you know, it, it can do the fast desert running, right? Now we found out it also tows quite well. Uh, yes, it won't tow with the, you know, the rest of the you know, regular trucks, but it, it has a lot of good, and then it's also luxurious, right? So you can, you can go to dinner, you can take it to dinner. Heated seats, there's nothing that an S-Class Mercedes, well, maybe fluted well, champagne glasses. Well, it has glasses, ventilated seats, you know, yeah. it has ventilated seats also. Maybe a refrigerator. So another minus on the TRX though, and I guess we're wrapping up here soon, but is price. You know, ultimately, yeah, you talked about people, you know, with crazy amounts of money and, you know, but. Dude, I thought it was price. Uh, and then, you know, GM dropped the Hummer EV at 112, <laughs> which makes the TRX look like, you know... <laughs> like a pedestrian? <laughs> like, a, let's stay within brand, right? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, what am I going to... What's, what's the cheapest... Uh, like a compass. A Jeep compass. Yeah, co in comparison. Uh, well, it's not the brand, you know. In I know, I know. Uh, so, 
You see so, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, so, it's, it's, it's or or Rivian, right? Rivian which just starts came, at 75. Yeah, 75 for the top of the line. And, and then, then 98. 98. Yeah. The only one that seems affordable out of out of the like the electric trucks is the Cybertruck. Right, that one was supposed to be 50, 40, 50, and 60, depending yeah, on Yeah, but 45. you know how Tesla does it. You know, they're going to be 70, 80. So, so, you know, yeah, 80 is a lot, but it start, the base one starts at how much? 70? 71. 71. After, so you can get, after uh, destination fee. You can get a base, and it's going to be very well. You won't have heads up display. You know, you won't have a lot Another of seats. Right. Right, but you will have the big 12 inch display. Yeah, that's standard. That's, and you will have the Hellcat, and you will have the active shocks. Yeah, and the amazing Bill Stein shocks, yeah. So, so, so yeah, it's expensive. Anything else you didn't like? No, that's it, dude. It's, it's amazing, it's comfortable, it's loud, oh, it's cool. Oh, fuel economy. Fuel economy. <laughs> it's not good. <laughs> oh, boy. So, the Jeep, I got about 22 yeah. and a half going home. Yeah. In the TRX, I got nine and a half. Yeah, you're in the teens. <laughs> And nine and a half is driving spiritedly. So, so we had a Hellcat, right? And uh, the Challenger, uh, the right? Challenger, and I drove it to LA, uh, and it was actually remarkably fuel efficient because even though it was seven hundred and seven horsepower at the time, right, uh, it still just kind of turned over at, at seventy or fifty-five miles an hour. It was like a two thousand RPM, and I was getting high twenties. Just that engine was just blip, 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 right? You know that, that, yeah. that Hemi kind of V eight, yeah, right? Just just not even working. The problem is when you put that same power plant into a 1,600-pound truck, yes. it's working a lot more. And it's got four-wheel drive permanent, yep. right? Permanent four-wheel drive, giant tires. I mean, these tires, the 35-inch tall off-road tires are about, what, 10 or 11 inches they're, wide? They're big, yeah. Um, and that's a lot of drag. 14, they say, on the highway. 14. 14. So What's the combined? According uh, to the 12. Yeah. So, you know, but having a, said that, that first-gen Raptor, 12.4. Yep. So it's kind of like a first-gen Raptor in, in in some ways. Yeah, and that had only you know 400 horsepower. Yeah, 410-ish. 410-ish. Yeah. This depending. one has 710. 702. 702. That's yeah, right. 702. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the the one. So this week we had it for a week from you know thanks to uh, Ram. Uh, so first we of course drag raced it as one would. Yes. What else would you of, do with of it? Course. <laughs> then we of course towed with it. Yep. Uh, and then we did something special, uh, which is you did that today. We actually did a drag race with the side by side. Uh, just because we could. Yeah, because the Can Am Maverick X3 that I was Towing. Kind of naming yeah. uh, earlier, Turbo RR, is a most powerful side by side you can buy right yeah. now from a factory. Um, 195 horsepower. The TRX is the most powerful pickup truck yeah. you can buy from the factory as far as horsepower. So we put them together. Yeah, why not? Because yeah. we do that. It's cl classic yeah. TFL mashup. Yeah. But the one thing that we didn't do with it uh, was we didn't really take it off road. Not in the Colorado Rockies. Not in the Colorado Rockies, just because, you know, we only get it for a week and there's only so much we can do with it in one yeah, week. Yeah, but hopefully, because we did order our own TRX. Yeah. Well, we get it. Hopefully, when we get it in a few weeks, hopefully in less than a few weeks, uh, we'll be doing much more. Yeah, because I want to take it, I'd love to take it to Moab. Yeah. Uh, and see how it handles Moab. I'd love to take it. The problem is, of course, we're getting snow, but we could do some snow stuff with it. Yeah. People uh, actually were asking for some snow reviews. Yeah. 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 So, you know, stay tuned for all of that because obviously it's a desert truck. Uh, and we do have sand here in Colorado. Uh, it's just probably, um, you know, we just need a truck. We can actually take it up uh, and do some sand running with it. We actually have sand dunes. Yeah. Of, of course, we've been, <laughs> this has been a weird year, right? Fires, COVID, virus, yeah, yeah, you name it. So it's been very tough. But uh, uh, Walden sand dunes are not far. So stay tuned. Of course, we'll take it off road. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we're probably going to get ourselves a, a, a Raptor again and do some more Raptor comparisons because the two have to be put together. I know there's a new Raptor coming, but it won't be for. They haven't even announced it, so when, when do you think the new Raptor will come? I'm, this time next year, probably, it'll be available? I think so. Yeah. I, I think within the year, they might show it and tease it, you know, do all this stuff within a couple of months, a few months. So we're going to have uh, a bunch of uh, cool new trucks coming that we can compare it to, hopefully. Uh, we keep our trucks about a year, so yeah. hopefully, you know, there'll be a cyber truck out this time next year. Rivian is in June. Rivian is supposed to, they were supposed yeah. to be out already. Yes, but so it's in June now. It's in June. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, well, the, the, the GM won't be out till 2022, so we've got a ways for that. Yeah. Uh, actually, at the end of 21, uh, the Hummer is supposed to be coming. 
we'll a, see. Year, a year from now. Yeah, everything's getting you know delayed. And then Jeep, we're going to be doing more, right? We I want to do it for two weeks. So thank you, uh, Jeep. They, they were kind enough to give it for for two weeks. Yeah. So I I want to Ike it. Okay. Well, Ike uh, it. I, I want to also do the MPG test, right? Yeah. Real world. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So so we can find out exactly. And, and, and we'll off road it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course we'll off road it. Yeah. yeah. We can't not not off road it, Jeep, yes. for God's sake. <laughs> Uh, so exciting times, uh, and then uh, we also have a GMC coming right next month. Yeah, so GMC Sierra diesel once again, AT4, three liter, AT4 2021, and they up operated it. They uh, increased the towing cap capacity on it. What is it now? From like 7,600 to about 9,100. So it's still under 10,000, but they operated, you know, they gave it more towing. It's a great time to be a truck gal or guy, I'll tell you. It, it, really, it really is. There's some exciting trucks coming. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, um, hopefully, uh, you know, I've kept this under my hat, but I'm going to spill the beans here. What? Uh, we should have a Ford F-150 hybrid coming. <laughs> yes. So that's a, that was a surprise. Yeah. Because Ford actually called the... <laughs> Ford called us and said, here's that one. They didn't invite us on the uh, first drive program. They didn't give us any press releases about it. But they didn't give us any press releases. They kind of blacklisted us. And then they dropped, they're dropping one off here, hopefully on Monday. Uh, so... Uh, so, yeah, F1, the new F-150. Yeah, the, the new hybrid. one, the 2021 hybrid. The hybrid, yeah. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of cool truck content. Oh, and the, you know what else is coming what next else? week? What else? How like Thanksgiving? What else? Is, uh, no. We're, gonna, we're getting a diesel Tahoe. Wow. You know what? We could do a night gauntlet with the hybrid and the Tahoe using the same amount of weight, probably. Yeah, and comparing, you know, different technologies, hybrid versus diesel. Yeah, you know what the, the manufacturers love if we each tow one. They love seeing that. Oh, I'm sure Ford no. would love seeing, <laughs> seeing the, 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 no. the, the Tahoe being towed, and then I'm sure that uh, uh, GM would love seeing the Ford being no, towed. No, manufacturers don't like that. Well, they would like the one, but not the other. Right. <laughs> they'd, like the, they'd like the first version of it, right. but not the flip version of it. Right. <laughs> that would not be cool, I, would, I, I well, wouldn't say. Well, well, well how, much do, how much does the uh, Tahoe diesel tow? You know what? I, I think it's going to be high country, the most luxurious one, yeah. which um, tows a little bit less. I, I think actually, about 8,400. 8, actually, the, the Ford F-150 hybrid also tows less. Yeah, it's, but, well, but, it's but it's a, we're getting a limited yeah. version, which Whoa, is like the most, the most expensive. That's going to be an $80,000 truck. Yeah, yeah. It could be actually more than a base TRX. Well, it is more than the base TRX. Yeah, I want to say, I, I was pricing one out, and I want to say a hybrid King Ranch mm -hmm. is like 75. Upper 70. High, Upper high 70, 70. Maybe 77. Yeah. 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 So, so if you're going to get the... This is a limited. This is, this is more. More. Wow. Yeah. So, and it, it might have big wheels. 22s. So it's going to tow... Once again. It's not gonna, it's gonna tow I bet you it's going to tow less than 10. It... We'll we'll have to be very careful right. when we because it's got the battery right, which is going to decrease payload. Yeah, so the hybrid F one hundred and fifty is rated at about twelve seven. Yeah, this is the base truck, the base models because they're offered it in a work truck also. So I was watching Ford. You know, I'm still, even though we have got this like weird like this functional relationship with Ford. Right, it's like you're in an argument with your wife, and yeah. then you go to bed and you don't talk to each other, but you wake up and everything's fine. Yeah, it's really weird. <laughs> but we're um, not in bed with Ford. No, no, of course not. <laughs> okay, just, I'm just it's kidding. an analogy. I'm okay, not, not okay, with Ford. okay. We actually don't take money from manufacturers, right? right. Independent, and honest reviews. Uh, but uh, Andre, uh, I was actually watching some of their uh, publicity, uh, and they said that they can charge up the Mach E with it. Yes. So I want to uh, charge up one of our electric cars. Absolutely. I want to. I want to try charging up the Tesla with it. Yeah, or the BMW or whatever. Yeah, it, it, they said yeah. it can it can like charge if you if you leave the engine running right because it's got a generator it can uh, uh, on a full tank go like thirty six hours. So I want to see how long it will take to charge up. I want to see how many uh, actually like amps you can draw. Uh, how many it will accept because the Tesla will accept a lot. I mean right. the Tesla will accept more than that. The BMW yeah. might not. But yeah, the Tesla BMW. Will. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and you know how many volts it's putting up. Right. Right. And watts. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. I want to, you will see this test. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. Um, two vehicles that are very different and yet very similar in, in a strange way. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of uh, TFL Talking Trucks. Uh, Andre, where should they go if they want the latest and greatest truck news? Well, tfltruck.com. Uh, also, uh, this podcast is on YouTube. Yep. So if you're listening to it, you want to watch it, it's TFL Talk uh, channel on YouTube or vice versa. If you don't want to watch it, 
you can always listen to it. And go to tflbids.com, our new yeah. uh, online auction site. Right now, there's not a lot going on except for F250, but I'm hoping that maybe by the time we actually get this uh, up on the YouTube channel, we'll have more trucks there to sell, uh, yeah. or maybe one, one of you wants to try selling your truck. We'd love to have you. As always, this is Roman. And Andre. Saying thanks for watching. Remember, check out tfltruck.com, where Andre is giving you the latest and greatest in news, views, and independent and honest real-world reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao.